And I'm the only one of my, here's, here's how Oklahoma I am. I'm the only one in my family, the only one in my family, the only one in my family, the only one in my family who has not currently or at one time worked for Walmart. I'm the only one that got out. Yes. I feel like that gang member who leads the gang and then they interview him and, just, and they, you know, darken his face and distort his voice. That's what I feel like. Like, yeah, man, Walmart for life's what I represent. We go to small towns, we take over everything. No Target, no Kmart, no Softco. Walmart, we represent Walmart, all for Walmart for life. Like, if I ever get a tattoo, it's gonna be with a smiley face right here with rollback prices right there. I'm Walmart for life. I will do a drive-by on a Target in a minute. Is that a Target? Walmart! I saw a lady recently crying in the middle of the aisle at Target, just in the middle of the ugly crying, hard crying, okay? And I was like, oh no, I should do something. So I'm in Target, I get myself ready, she's crying so hard. I go right up to her and I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, uh, I think you mean to be in Walmart right now? So, <laughs> nailed that interaction, yeah. How about, how about don't cry in Target, Karen, okay? I'm not paying an extra 15 cents for macaroni and cheese to see you cry. Target is for champions, okay? Ridiculous. Oh, gosh. Well, people are curious. You're a comedian. What do you do with your free time? Here's what I did today. I put on a red polo shirt, a pair of khaki pants. I went down to Target, and I messed with people. That's fun. Oh, and the first thing you discover, women love Target. So much, you have your own special name for it. What do you call it, ladies? Tarshay. Tarshay. <laughs> you walk in there, hello, Tarshay. You don't go to J.C. Penwall. <laughs> no. Target is more special. Target is so special, you don't even see a mom yell at her child there. It's sacred grounds. Not the case at Walmart. <laughs> Different story at Walmart. It's more exciting there. You're liable to see somebody beating the crap out of their child <laughs> in every aisle. <laughs> if you don't believe me, perk up your ears next time. Here's what you'll get. You little deadbeat, if your daddy wasn't such a loser, and actually made some money, we'd be shopping at Target. <laughs> and I don't want to start sounding like I'm an elitist. I shop at them all. Everybody's got a store they make fun of. People at Macy's make fun of the people at Target. The Target people make fun of the people at Walmart. The people at Walmart make fun of the people at the dollar store. <laughs> and that's where it ends. <laughs> right? Because the people at the dollar store are like, we got no place to make fun of. <laughs> hey, let's go to Goodwill. Our stuff's new. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm convinced that there's a secret race of people that only comes out at 2 a.m. and only at Walmarts. Who's with me? <laughs> the Walmart people, they, you, you know, and you see them when you're doing something like a normal person does, buying a single donut. That's what I'm at Walmart at 2 a.m. for, single donut. There's all the rules, right? You don't look, eye, don't make eye contact, you don't talk to them. As I'm going through the checkout line, dude in front of me, cashier who's clearly inexperienced because he just starts up a conversation with a Walmart person. <laughs> And the dude has four extra large bags of dog food. And so the cashier, being the naive schlep that he was, is like, oh, this is a normal question. He's like, hey, like, what kind of dog do you have? And the, the dude just turns with no irony in his voice at all and says, I don't have a dog. So Big Boy wants a salty substitute for some Cocoa Puffs, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> and I didn't mean to stare, but this was magnificent. This, was, this conversation was going on. And he turns around and he's like, what are you looking at? And I was like, oh, nothing, sir. I'm just, uh, are you wearing a jump rope? <laughs> we went to high school together. <laughs> Remember the butter? Switch to dog food, probably healthier. <laughs> Next time you're having a day where you're just feeling kind of down about yourself, you want a little pick-me-up, go to, I call this the self-esteem store. You guys probably call it Walmart, but <laughs> whenever I go shopping there and I look at all the other people, I always just feel a lot better about myself <laughs> and my own life and choices I've made. 
So I graduated from college in 1986 from the University of Georgia, and if you do the quick math, that makes me 55 years old. And I love being over 50. There's something magical about, and particularly as a woman, about being over 50 is I just don't care what people think anymore, and it's very freeing. It's really fun. And it happened in Target in South Portland, Maine, right after my 50th birthday, it was February, it was snowing, and in Maine, probably like here, it snows, and they give you these towels at Target to wipe out the snow out of the shopping carts that come in from the parking lot. This particular day I got there, and there were, all the shopping carts were wet, but there were no towels, but there was this little millennial girl at the door, and she was the Target greeter that day, <laughs> and her name was Amanda, and she was just ah, getting through her three-hour grueling shift at Target. <laughs> Uh, and I said, Amanda, where are those towels, these shopping carts so wet? She goes, oh, they're still wet from last night. <sighs> I said, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. She goes, I know, it's almost time for my break. <laughs> well, how am I supposed to shop? These are wet. She said, well, you can just take it in the bathroom and wipe it out with a paper towel, duh. <laughs> and I thought, you know, my 30-year-old self would have gone in the bathroom and wiped it out with a paper towel. My 40-year-old self would have called Amanda's manager over and we would have had a discussion about customer service and how bad Amanda sucked at it. <laughs> but my 50-year-old self just took my shopping cart directly to the first clothing section that I came to. <laughs> and I just lined it with little boys' t-shirts and soaked up all the water in there. I shot for an hour and a half, and then I got to the checkout line, I paid for the things that I wanted. I got down to those shirts. I said, you know what? I've decided I don't want these. They're wet. <laughs> Maybe Amanda can wipe them out on her little break. <laughs> I'm 50. <laughs> about 250 miles west of New York City. My hometown is Hornell, New York. Hornell, H-O-R-N-E-L-L. -L. Hornell is a small town just on the outskirts of a Walmart. <laughs> Which means I'm a real American because real Americans live close to Walmarts. And if it's a 24-hour Walmart, that's as good as our life will ever get. Because we're Americans and sometimes we wake up and we need stuff. <laughs> you, just, you just sit up in bed, oh boy. Woo! I'm gonna need a garden hose. <laughs> I can't wait. I said I can't wait, woman. <laughs> Dang girl, don't hold me back. <laughs> Anyone like me, sometimes I shop at one of these stores. I don't know what I need until I'm in the store. <laughs> Because I don't shop like my parents. My parents were very frugal people. Uh, when they went shopping, they always had a list, and they would only buy what was on the list. When I go shopping, I don't have a list. I have an hour. <laughs> I just grab a cart. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Next thing I'm in the checkout line, I look in my cart. It's like coming to out of an alcoholic blackout. <laughs> I, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I was gonna stuff it on need. I got like a nursing bra. I've got a nursing bra. I got a nursing bra and a canoe. Hey. And this is when I'll often abandon my shopping cart. And don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. They're all over the store. Dozens, dozens of half full carts. They said, little plaques. This is where a shopper came to his senses. <laughs> My first time ever in Provo. Went out today and did what everyone does the first time they come to Provo. Nice. I went to Walmart. Because <laughs> I wanted to look nice. <laughs> I love Walmart because you can think your life's pretty screwed up. And then you go to Walmart, you're like, oh, geez, look at those people. <laughs> Oh, uh, so I was out and about today. I went over to Walmart today, so... <laughs> There's some nasty Walmarts out there, aren't there? You know, I, I hate going to the place. I really do, but sometimes I enjoy it because I feel like a princess when I go in there. <laughs> I, 
I could be their god, you know, because they're unclean. <laughs> I'm such a jerk. <laughs> I know. I will say really bad things up here. I just have to apologize. I might say in something insulting or something nice or whatever, but whatever it is, I don't mean it. So. <laughs> anyway, I was at Walmart. Oh man, <laughs> I saw this woman walking walking around, and um, you know she's a heavy set woman, and she had on a Hunger Games T-shirt. <laughs> I like she won. <laughs> Katniss, that's what she did. <laughs> that was mean? Is that what somebody said to me? Oh, was you? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Just kidding. We're good. See, I'll say something really bad. That's what I'll do. But I was at Walmart, and um, I was standing in line, you know, and I was standing behind this woman who uh, didn't have any front teeth, and yet she was wearing a Bluetooth. <laughs> I was like, really, lady? <laughs> you know, you had a little extra cash in your pocket, and that was the tooth you chose to purchase. <laughs> right? It's not distracting from the meth mouth or anything like that. <laughs> what? All of a sudden, you guys are defending meth? Boo! <laughs> Gosh, get your priorities straight here. Holy cow. Suits. You know where you go in Walmart? The worst, worst thing, I don't like to insult people, but food stamp days is the worst day to go to Walmart when they get really good their food stamps. So it gets all night nutsy and crazy and stuff. So if you need a break, you need to go somewhere to get away from all the people, you, seriously, you go to the toothpaste aisle. <laughs> look at you, look at me, oh my gosh. But seriously, you can read a book there. It's okay, I got my son, he's the enforcer. He's 10 now. We started getting him into the sports, or, you know, when he's about six, right? Starting the sports, so he's been doing that since bulking up, you know? <laughs> right? Six years old. Who remembers playing sports when they were a kid? Like T-ball, soccer, round of applause, if you gotta remember this, huh? Okay. Here's the thing, now that I have kids in the sports and doing this stuff, I've noticed something. Sports, they changed for kids. They've changed since I played. See, I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, right? And sports, we just did things differently. It was just different. I mean, <laughs> We did crazy stuff in the 80s, you guys. Yeah, we kept score, uh, which is completely unheard of now, right? Because you don't want to hurt the kids' feelings if they lose, right? Because everyone's a winner, right, guys? That's real life, isn't it? No, I've been to Walmart. We're not all winners out there, guys, all right? We're not all I had all the jobs working back in the hood, man. When I was young, I worked in retail. Anybody ever worked retail before? That was about the right reaction. <laughs> I worked at Target, man. Nothing against Target. It was cool, but they want to cross-train you in every department, so you were useful at Target, okay? So I wasn't just the cashier. I was in guest services. I was a cart attendant. I was in the gardening center for like a day. That was... Because <laughs> I don't know nothing about gardening. So I was just lying to people all day long. <laughs> this old lady came up to me with this plant, like, how do you take care of this plant? Water it. <laughs> and if it starts to die, water it less. <laughs> There's a middle ground where you operate in there somewhere. <laughs> electronics was the department I got fired in though, man. I know less about electronics than I do about gardening. <laughs> Guy came up to me with a camera. Hey, how you work this camera? Water it. <laughs> and if it starts to die, water it less. Here's my thing. I try to make every situation I'm in a better one, right? All the time, everywhere I go. If it, here's what happened. They totally misunderstood what I was doing, and it was just weird, but nothing but here's, here's the deal. I was at Walmart the other day, and yeah, I said Walmart. I know there are anti-Walmart people in this world, and I want you to know that if you hate Walmart, I hate you. <laughs> Just try dealing with that one. <laughs> Hanging over your head. In fact, you know what? If there's anyone here tonight who works at Walmart, I just... 
I just want to say to you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for giving up on your dreams. <laughs> to help me save 15 cents on a box of nutter bars. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Your sacrifice has not gone unnoticed. So anyway, there I am. I'm in the Walmart. I'm in the dog food aisle getting the jerky treats because they're cheaper than the regular jerky. <laughs> Are you a bunch of species? You know, you start them young, the kids can't tell the difference. <laughs> it's like, we want the chewy ones. Plus you can get them in salmon, which is normally cost prohibitive. <laughs> so there we are. Someone's there with me, right? And you know, when you're at Walmart, you already feel like you're with family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So we're there, and look, if I could take this back, please, from the, please understand, from the bottom of my mind, please, please understand, nothing but love, nothing but love when I said this. If I could take it back, I would, please, nothing. Nothing but love was intended when I said, ma'am, you must be so excited. When's the baby due? <laughs> yeah, that guy was pissed. <laughs> I was in the grocery store. This old man said something to me. I knew how to respond, y'all. I had no comeback. I'm pushing my cart. I said, excuse me, sir. He said, oh no, you have just as much right to be here as me. <laughs> Why, thank you, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Feels great to shop at a newly desegregated Walmart. You got the brown bread by the white bread. I feel totally safe now. Oh, thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you. No, they say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Well, if that's the case, then why has every fight I've ever had with my husband started with the phrase, here, I'll be you? <laughs> Yeah, this will be good. No, I'm gonna be you. Here, I'll do it. I got it. Oh, my wife is so mean. <laughs> she makes me take out the garbage all by myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, of course, he starts in, like, Target, Target, shop at Target, spend all our money at Target, Oreos, Oreos, Target, Target, Target. I'm like, I get the Oreos, but why you gotta bring Target into this? <laughs> Not cool, dude. Men, they don't get it. They don't get why we love Target. It's like, babe, I know when we got married, I said that you made all my dreams come true, but it's actually Target. <laughs> Target slogan should be, come for deodorant, leave with everything else. Yeah. I spent less than $20 at Target one time. Yeah, thank you, I know. It was incredible. Um, <laughs> I took a picture of my receipt, texted it to my husband. It's the only thing framed on his desk at work. <laughs> he basically threw a parade in my honor. You guys, he still brags about it to his friends. They're like, you gotta keep her, man, she's a keeper. Anytime we have a fight, I'm like, yeah, but that one time I didn't, I, I only spent $20 at Target. To travel a lot this last year. A lot of cities I've never been to before. And if I get to a city I've never been to before, I do the same thing. I check into the hotel and I immediately go to Walmart. Because I'm like, I feel like I can get a good sense of the city. You know, just like a nice, like sampling of the people that live there. And 
Truth is, they're all exactly the same. Everywhere you go, it's the same cast of characters. So there's a family breaking down in the produce section. There's always a husband and wife getting divorced in the pots and pans aisle. So there's that weird guy waist deep in the $5 DVD bin. You know. They make it work for it, you know. You know. Get the good ones at the bottom, so. <laughs> Turner and Hooch, there it is. Diamond in the rough, there it is. The things people wear to Walmart, I mean, what is going on? I mean, it's just, it's not even like dirty or tattered clothing. It's like, they're wearing things to Walmart I've never seen a human wear outside of Walmart. I walked in one time, I saw a lady shopping. She wasn't even wearing a shirt. She had just pulled her sweatpants up to her armpits. <laughs> just standing next to the bananas for some reason. I walked right up to her, I was like, you better be here to buy a shirt, okay? So I don't need to see this. I'm trying to get my potassium. Now she had in her cart were peeps. Those marshmallow Easter candies. I was like, lady, don't take this the wrong way, but if there was a picture next to insanity in the dictionary, you would be it. Just a lady in a sweatpants dress with a cart full of peeps. go late, late to Walmart, that's the best, right? 3 a.m., just a few gems walk around that place. Saw one guy shopping in a Snuggie. One of those backwards blanket things. If that doesn't cry, I give up, I don't know what does. If you leave the house in flip-flops and a blanket with sleeves, you've given up. But I was drunk when I saw him, I was like, is that a wizard buying fiber bars? Is there a wizard in this Walmart? But it's just funny, I don't know if you know this, but Walmart actually encourages you if you're driving across country and you need to take a nap to sleep in their parking lots because they have lights and security and they're open 24 hours. And I've done it once or twice. It's never the best idea. I, well, Mobile, Alabama, I slept in the Walmart parking lot. At 3 a.m. I get a knock on the window. I wake up and I look over, there's a guy, no shirt, jean shorts. I roll the window down and I go, yeah? And he goes, can you help with anything? I go, dude, I'm sleeping in my car at a Walmart parking lot. Go knock on a car at Target. <laughs> That's where the money is, right? But yeah, people love the self-checkout lanes at Walmart. I don't get it, it seems like a scam. There's like 10 cashiers doing nothing, you know? They're all tweeting and Snapchatting. Now we're looking up codes and checking out our own groceries like it's some kind of giant cashier fantasy camp. You're like, this is fun. It's stupid. Let's get honest, right? Self-checkout lanes are good for one thing and one thing only, and that's stealing. So if you're not, <laughs> if you're not stealing at the self-checkout lane, you're not doing it right, okay? No one's watching you. And I'm not gonna lie, I dabble in the stealing, but it's... It's only in one very specific area, and that's apples. Because if they think I'm paying $4 an apple for a Honeycrisp, they're out of their minds, okay? No matter what apple I'm buying, I'm punching in Red Delicious over and over again. It's horrible 80 cent apples. Like a notch above a wax apple. It's 4422, that's the code, guys. It's the same at every Walmart. <laughs> you spend enough money in there, you might as well just punch it in for everything, you know? Like papayas, mangoes, 44.22. Shrimp, DVDs, 44.22. Some manager up front's losing his mind. We are killing it on apples today, guys. Call the orchards, we need another delivery. <laughs> world's changed, right? We live in a different place now. We've gotten lazier, you know. Not you guys, just people in general. <laughs> like, we have grocery stores now. We don't even hunt for food anymore. It's like, I need steak, aisle four, sweet, and that's it, right? There's no adventure, there's no hunt. I feel like grocery stores should at least hide the food. <laughs> just make it hard to find. That's why I like Walmart. <laughs> You go in there, you're like, where's the lunch meat? Oh, it's under the bath towels. There we go. So 
we're walking towards Target, she finally looks up from her phone and she goes, hey mom, what does the symbol for Target mean? <laughs> Again, intelligent crowd, intelligent crowd. What does the symbol for Target mean? I just looked at her and go, it means community college, honey. <laughs> She went, does it really? I was like, yes! I'm so saving on this one. I am. She really does. She hates that joke. She does. She gets so annoyed. She's, I mean, it's just a circle within a circle. So it makes it a target! <laughs> Sorry. It's a lot. It's a lot to keep up with millennials. I'm trying really hard. <laughs> it is a journey. When I first came back, I shot a reality show, and they told me to go to Walmart and get a scale so that I could keep my fans updated on my weight loss. I hadn't had a scale since I was a little girl, and it was that scale in my grandma's bathroom. You guys remember that scale? It was this scale with the dial. And if you stood on it and you were chubby, it just went, ah! <laughs> but first, you had to lean down and scrape the Aquanet hairspray off of the... <laughs> I couldn't do this before I lost the weight. You guys should enjoy the bending over part. <laughs> Walmart has an entire aisle of scales, newfangled scales. The first one that I pulled down was called the talking scale. <laughs> Marinate in that, ladies. <laughs> There's a scale that says your weight out loud. <laughs> in the middle of a Walmart. <laughs> I don't think a female invented this device. <laughs> That's a man doing right there. If a female invented it, it would be a smart scale. If you jumped on it and you gained weight, it would lie to you. <laughs> You'd just jump on it and be like, who's a pretty little princess? <laughs> I'm the princess that deserves another brownie, right? <laughs> I had to try it out. I jumped on the scale. It said my weight out loud. This old man came around the corner. He goes, what was that, missy? I said, we're getting a price check on a flat screen, Grandpa. <laughs> Mind your own business. <laughs> There's a sale in electronics. <laughs> the next scale we pulled down said right on the box what it does. It's a projection scale. There's a projection scale. <laughs> it says right on there, conveniently put your weight right onto the wall in front of you for your easy viewing convenience. <laughs> Do you get it? Puts it right there in front. All I was thinking was, man, Walmart figured out we can't see our feet anymore. <laughs> They had to send up the bat signal on that one, didn't they? <laughs> na 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 na. <laughs> you got the Batman joke though, right? There, okay. I've had multiple awkward experiences at the grocery store too. The, sec the second awkward thing that happened at the grocery store, I got yelled at by the grocery cart corral guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah the grocery cart corral guy, that's just the person that, that gets all the carts that are out in the in the, like, the parking lot, like at a Target, Walmart, or grocery, and then just brings the cart to the entryway. I didn't know they could yell at you. They can yell at you. <laughs> and it, it was all a miscommunication, because I had put my groceries in, in my car, and then when I, when I put my cart away, uh, I, when, when I'm at those kind of places, I like to find a corral that's really far away, and I like to get some speed going, and I like to kind of get a run and then let it go and watch it fly and bang around in the corral. Like, that's a really exciting Tuesday for me when I get to do that. So I did it. I found my corral. I executed the maneuver perfectly. But apparently there had been, the corral guy was standing at a corral that was right next to my car. Uh, and he just thought 
I, he was waiting for me patiently to put my groceries away because he assumed I, I would just hand him my cart like a normal human being. <laughs> but instead he saw me just go, nope, and then just push it like a mile away. <laughs> and then like right when I let go, like I realized something went wrong because he was like, for real? And I like, I like looked over and I like, was like, oh, oh, oh. And I, I knew I could still solve the problem because like, like a normal person would just run, grab the cart, bring it back to him, be like, oh, I'm sorry, that was rude, I didn't see you. But I just panicked, was like, no, oh, no, I just got my car and drove away. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty sure that guy hates me. <laughs> he might have been the one that put ice on my driveway. <laughs> yeah, it used to be a lot harder to be a parent, I think. When I was growing up in the 80s, we were kids, we could be gone from the house for two or three days in a row, no big deal. <laughs> Yeah, and if, if you were gone for too long, still not a big deal. They just slap your face on the side of a milk carton, drive you right back to the house. <laughs> Doesn't work that way anymore. Nope. Nowadays, if the little guy's out of your sight for like an hour, it's a crisis, and you've got to take care of it all yourself. You've got to get his photo. You go down to the lobby of the Walmart, tack it up on that cork board they got there. That's where we, as a society, have chosen to place missing persons headquarters. <laughs> The lobby of the Walmart? That's a terrible idea. You ever been on your way out of Walmart? The last thing you're looking for is more unattended children. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw some of them in there. You should take the cork board inside, match them up. I was on my way down to Florida. I'm, I'm from Atlanta, so I'm driving down to Florida for a show and stopped in a place called Tifton, Georgia for lunch. And they sat me next to these four old codgers. You know them. They're the four guys that are retired and they get together every day and solve all the problems of the world, right? <laughs> well, today's subject was Walmart versus Kmart as Walmart being the better store. So the leader took over. He goes, well, shoot. Everybody in town likes Walmart better. Go by there anytime, day or night. Look at the parking lot. Walmart's always half full. Kmart's half empty. <laughs> <laughs> Spit food out of my mouth. <laughs> Then they offered him a job. He goes, yep, yep, yep. They want me to be a Walmart greeter. Offer me $200 a week. I said, oh, no. I don't leave the house for less than $500 a month. <laughs> the only bad part I've found about being a comic is I do have to work a lot of late nights. Like I was working at a comedy club when I was home in Houston. And my daughter called me, told me to stop by the store on my way home pick up some toilet paper because we were out when you live in a house with a bunch of women there never seems to be enough toilet paper i don't know what sort of creative projects they're coming up with what uses i have no idea but we never have enough i was like that's great it's 12 30. i've had a few drinks and now i have to go to the super walmart <laughs> what could possibly go wrong <laughs> I showed up at my house about 1.30 a.m. with a riding lawnmower <laughs> and golf balls. And I forgot the toilet paper. <laughs> it's not my fault. Have y'all been to the Super Bowl Marts? They got way too much stuff going on in that store. I mean, you can book travel, get your eyes checked, get your nails done, get your hair done, get your taxes done, buy groceries and firearms. <laughs> they will sell you guns at Walmart and then they'll let you check yourself out. <laughs> Y'all got way too much going on in this store. <laughs> You guys got the 24-hour Walmart? Got that, right? Over here? Got that. We got a new one by our house. 24-hour Walmart. Thank God for that. I don't know how many times I woke up at 3 a.m. going, I need some underwear and a cantaloupe right now. <laughs> 24-hour. Every time I walk in there, I think, could we get a few more lights in here, possibly? <laughs> Place is bright. People go, where'd you get your tan? Walmart. <laughs> I do 20 minutes a week in the shampoo section. <laughs> Place is huge, too. I saw people hitchhiking. Anybody going with the vitamins? <laughs> Anybody? I got my glasses at Walmart. They have an optometry section at Walmart. You can get glasses there and everything. Took the eye exam. 
You guys have probably done that, the eye exam. That's pretty foolproof. It's like, okay, Mike, cover your right eye, read the top line. O, A, C, D. Okay, cover your left eye, read the same line. <laughs> the O, A, C, D line, you wanna read that one? <laughs> w, K, L, M? Best friend in the world's named Jimbo. We've been best friends of eight. He'll come over tomorrow. He's the kind of guy like, you're like, you're like, hey man, I'm come over and help you move. You pull your minivan up. He's like, let's pop the wheel off that Toyota. I think you got a bad rotor. I mean, he's that guy. But his luck is awful. He can't find the right job. Can't find the right girl. And he's so negative. And I'm like, I don't try to get religious. I'm like, man, dude, ye shall have faith. Come on, just keep, you know, you know the universe is a mirror. What, you know, whatever you think is gonna come by. I'm just trying to get on his wavelength because he's got the worst luck in the world. But it all changed recently, and I wrote a song for him. Here he goes. Rock bottom in an ocean of debt. Out of a job and over his head. Now he told the bank about his bad luck. They helped him on his feet by taking his truck. He prayed every night for a miracle. Now all his prayers were answered just a week or so ago. I guess good things just happen. The good people, how oh, oh. Cause he slipped and fell at a Walmart. He's physically okay. His, heart. his lawyer says he shakes when he sees a shopping cart. <laughs> Things are going well since he slipped and fell at a Walmart. Whoa, prices are falling. <laughs> so is he. Now he won the redneck lottery. <laughs> he slipped and fell at a Walmart. He's moving now from the trailer park. He bought a brand new car, one that always starts. He slipped and fell at a Walmart. Thank you. Yeah. I am not in a gang. Don't let the uh, Target outfit fool you. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is Target. It's Italian. Um, Massimo, I believe, is the designer's name. Uh, Massimo Morona. Um, Massimo is an Italian word meaning under $20. <laughs> weird happens to me while I'm at, at Walmart. I was, this is a true story. I'm at the frozen food section and a blessed little elder, she comes up to me, she says, young man. And I went, okay. <laughs> she says, you're tall. Went, All right. <laughs> Can you help me with that ice cream right up there? I'd be more than happy to do that. Here, put your foot right there, baby. Let's give you up a <laughs> And the president of the Smarty Pants Clubs, yeah.